Welcome to our YouTube channel Medical Subjects Made Easy. Today's topic is chemoprophylaxis. Chemoprophylaxis is the use of medications to prevent the development, progression, or reoccurrence of a disease. It is commonly used in infectious diseases to prevent the spread of pathogens or the development of drug-resistant strains. Here are some points that provide more detail under relevant headings regarding chemoprophylaxis. I. Definition and Purpose 1. Chemoprophylaxis refers to the use of medications to prevent the occurrence or progression of a disease. 2. It is primarily used in infectious diseases to prevent the spread of pathogens or the development of drug-resistant strains. 3. The purpose of chemoprophylaxis is to reduce the risk of infection in individuals who are at high risk either due to exposure or susceptibility to a particular disease. 4. It can be used in both primary prevention, preventing the initial infection, and secondary prevention, preventing reoccurrence or worsening of an existing infection. 2. Types of chemoprophylaxis 1. Pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP this involves taking medication before potential exposure to prevent infection. For example, pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV involves taking antiretroviral medications regularly to reduce the risk of contracting the virus. 2. Post-exposure prophylaxis, PEP. This involves taking medication after a potential exposure to prevent infection. It is commonly used in diseases like HIV, where individuals may take antiretroviral medications within 72 hours of a potential exposure to reduce the risk of contracting the virus. 3. Travel-related prophylaxis. This involves taking medications to prevent specific diseases while traveling to areas with a high prevalence of certain infections. Examples include malaria prophylaxis in regions where malaria is endemic and prophylaxis against traveler's diarrhea. 3. Examples of chemoprophylaxis 1. Antibiotics. Commonly used in the prevention of bacterial infections, such as prophylactic antibiotics given prior to certain surgeries, e.g., dental procedures, joint replacements. 2. Antimalarials. Used to prevent malaria infection in individuals traveling to or residing in malaria endemic regions. Examples include chloroquine, mefloquine, and doxycycline. 3. Antiretrovirals. Used in the prevention of HIV infection, such as pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP, with medications like tenofovir, emtricitabine. 4. Antifungals. May be used in certain high-risk populations, such as those with weakened immune systems, to prevent fungal infections like fluconazole used in preventing opportunistic infections in HIV-AIDS patients. 5. Antivirals, used for the prevention or early treatment of viral infections, such as oseltamivir, Tamiflu, used as post-exposure prophylaxis for influenza. IV. Considerations and Limitations 1. Efficacy the effectiveness of chemoprophylaxis varies depending on the disease, medication used, timing, and individual compliance. It is essential to understand the effectiveness of specific chemoprophylaxis regimens before implementation. 2. Side effects. Medications used for chemoprophylaxis may have potential side effects, which need to be considered when determining the risk-benefit ratio. Close monitoring and assessment of side effects are necessary. 3. Drug resistance. The widespread use of chemoprophylaxis can lead to the development of drug-resistant strains of pathogens. Proper monitoring and adherence to recommended guidelines are crucial to prevent resistance. 4. Cost and accessibility. Some chemoprophylactic medications may be expensive or not readily available in certain regions, limiting their use and effectiveness. 
5. Duration. Chemoprophylaxis may require long-term use, depending on the disease and individual risk factors. Compliance with the prescribed regimen is essential for its effectiveness. In summary, chemoprophylaxis is a valuable tool in preventing the occurrence or progression of infectious diseases. It encompasses various medications and strategies tailored to specific diseases and populations. However, considerations such as efficacy, side effects, drug resistance, and cost should be carefully evaluated to ensure appropriate use. If you found this video interesting please like this video and subscribe to